uh, where there are a number of things that you can't do with type parameters and um, uh, this basically is a list of them and to understand why that is it helps to remember that um, uh, in the actual class for the generic file um, the type that you pass in is get, gets erased so um, you don't have any type information there basically about any parameterized types um, okay so let's look at the first thing you can't do one thing you can't do is you can't create objects of type T so uh, this for instance would give a, a compiler error you can't say new T and uh, you think about it that's that's fairly obvious because um, you don't know what which T it is because you have no information about any um, um, about any uh, uh, parameterized types so you don't know which T it is so you have no idea which constructed a core or anything like that so that's completely out um, similarly you can't uh, create arrays of type T either because of the, well, the same reason um, uh, next um, you can't uh, you can't use T as a superclass because um, if you had a an inner class in here which extends T like that uh, you'd have a problem because um, the constructor for inner would want to call the super constructor and you don't know which one it is because you don't know what T is um, you also can't use this where T is a class literal um, I'm going to have to say some more about class literals um, when we come around to discussing uh, reflection and things like that. So I won't say too much about that at the moment. Um, uh, I just suffice to say that there's this thing called, there's this class called class, and um, you can use it to do all sorts of things like inspecting classes and uh, looking at methods in classes and stuff like that. You can get a lot of information from it and uh, putting dot class on it as a literal like that is actually a special type of literal if there was a normal class there um, uh, that will produce the classes class see what I mean? but uh, I'll, I'll say more about that uh, later when we come around to reflection and stuff like that okay um, uh, that's okay no, no problem with it's used like that, uh, you can return uh, something of type T, that's fine. Uh, you can even uh, throw something of type T, but of course you have to remember that because uh, you're throwing it, it has to be of type throwable, uh, which fortunately it is in this case, so that's all right. Um, uh, now, the next thing you can't do is you can't say, you can't use instance of, because that requires that you specify a class there, not a uh, not a type parameter, so you've actually got a well, or, or a type in fact. So you've actually got to put um, a, a type in there, not a type parameter, because it doesn't know which one you're talking about, so it can't have as an instance of. All that requires knowledge of the um, of the actual type at runtime, and you haven't got that available. Um, throw n, yeah, you can. You can certainly do this. Um, N here being uh, there, it returns a type T which is throwable, so you can throw it. Just by calling it like that, that's not a problem. Um, throw that thing, which is a Java IO exception, that's not a problem. Okay, the next thing you can't do is you can't catch an exception of type T because of uh, the way that. Um, um, exception handling works. Um, it checks uh, the type of the exception shown and if it matches against that type. Well, um, with this um, type parameters like this, it, it has no knowledge. It has to know what the type is, so there's no way it can do something like that. Um, a final one that it can't do is um, you can't use um, type T in a static context like this, this is uh, static here, you can't do it all or of course another static context would be as a static variable for instance you can't have a static variable of type T um, or static initializer that would be uh, not allowed either um, uh, and basically because um, uh, this can only refer to static information being a static context here and um, 
so uh, you don't know what T is. Uh, indeed, there, there may be no parameterized types at all in the system when it's being called, so you've got no way to deal with it. Okay, so that's that. Um, uh, so some more about this static context. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It also includes um, static nested classes. They also count as a static context, of course. So so does uh, nested interfaces, of course, which are always static. Um, and if you think about it, uh, it's obvious uh, because um, um, static class or interface is independent of the enclosing class. You can lift it out of the enclosing class completely independent of it. So it's got no relationship to this type really. You can uh, instantiate it without ever having to instantiate this type. That's what I'm saying really. So it's got no business using that type parameter. Now if it's necessary and you want to, you can um, you can make uh, any nested class or interface can be made generic, that's not a problem. Um, apart from, of course, anonymous classes, which, because they haven't got a name, you can't make them, them generic. Of course. And um, for ordinary non-static classes, of course, they can use the type parameter. And uh, maybe say a bit more about that in a minute.